That's the Blackwater River. And down this way would be where Blackwater Falls is. Won't be going in that direction, but I understand they're really beautiful. And I'd bet particularly in the springtime. But on this way to the uh, trails in the state, in the uh, national forest, and then I'll hook over to the uh, state, uh, the state park there. Time to get off the road and into the forest. Yellow Birch Trail. This takes me across. I'll cross over uh, another trail called the Plantation Trail. And then I eventually come out. Oh, look how nicely maintained this trail is. And I'll come out onto a Forest Service Road, turn right, and then pretty quickly turn left and go up to that uh, lodge there where I'll be staying. Hmm, trail junction. Which way do I go? Well, seeing as how that goes down to the road I just came from, except in a different direction, I guess I'll go that away. Oh, look at that. There's actually American Discovery Trail marker. So, yep. On to this way, that way. Oh, and by the way, this is also called um, the Heart of the Highlands Trail as well. Here's one of those markers. I'll have to look that up. Or Heart of the Highlands, Heart of the Highlands. .org. No, heart of the Highlands Trail.org. It's a pretty trail. Oh, and by the way, do you know what these are called? I found them a lot along the uh, North Fork of the Blackwater River there yesterday. And I see them here on the trail now today. They're obviously evergreen. Um, looks like something you'd find in a rainforest, huh? But I have no idea what they're called. Let me know if you know. All right, so I'm leaving the state park, the Blackwater Falls State Park now. And this trail has now become the Davis Trail. Remember it was the Yellow Birch Trail when I first got on there from the road, now it's the Davis Trail. Still got this nice rainforesty kind of look to it. Kind of boggy in, spa in places too. I mean not real bad, just a little spot here and there. But enough to slow you down just a little bit so you don't get all mucked up in the mud. This water looks and sounds yummy. Can you hear it? Let me get closer. Yeah. But I'm not crossing here. Actually, there's a bridge right over here. But I wanted to come and check out the water. I'm going to give it a taste, too. That stuff tasted pretty good. It was yummy, actually. Hmm. Alright, be careful here. Whoa. Quite icy. Oh, speaking of icy. You still there with me, icy? Pray for me. Now, there's a trail shelter over here I've been looking for, but look at this. It looks like somebody's come here with a cart not too long ago. Huh. You can see the two... Well, right now you can't, but uh, you can see the two track, two wheel tracks. 
Let's go see what the shelter looks like here. And here it is. What do you think? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight people easily in here, if not ten. Hmm. Oh, and of course, had to sign the trail register, or what they call a trail register, just a bunch of pieces of paper and sticky notes. Well, that was a fun little trail, kind of boggy and icy at times. And now I come out here to this Forest Service Road. I think it's Forest Road 13, right? And down that way, nope, going to the right. A la derecha. And then the next trail, just I think about a quarter mile down or so, we go a la izquierda to the left. Wow, what a change in scenery, huh? Let's try that again. Snow? Yeah, there's still snow. Um, about 3,600 feet elevation right now. And this snow, I would guess, is uh, just from that snowstorm we got a week and a half ago. So you can see how cold it's been here ever since. Where is this? It's in the uh, Canaan. Valley State Park area. The National Forest is over here, Monongahela. And again, look how this has changed already. And this is the State Park, Canaan Valley. Have you ever seen anything like this here? I think I've seen green or black ones growing out from trees like this, but um, never any red ones. <laughs> kind of pretty. Well, you know what this section almost reminds me of? In a way, sort of, kind of. If you remember the episode back when I was going up to the Continental Divide on the Pine River Trail, I was going through all the aspen forest, but the aspens hadn't bloomed yet. You know, that was last spring. I'll uh, show you right here, and I'll also put a link up to the episode up there on top if you haven't seen that episode. Yeah, so this reminds me of that. Now, of course, these aren't these aren't uh, aspens, but you know, it does look like that. Look at that. And he's not running away. Hi, right, come on over. Come on over, say hi. Come on over. No? All right. You go your way. I'll go mine. 
Isn't there a song like that? You go your way, I'll go mine. <laughs> it looks like I'm just about to lodge right up there somewhere. Before I go up the hill there, nice view, huh? I think this is called Balsam Swamp. And there's um, beaver out there, a bunch of, bunch of well, wildlife. Um, well, here, let's go look at the sign. But uh, even on a cloudy, cold day, it's pretty. But the sign here, uh, muskrat, mink, Canada geese, mallard ducks, blue and green wing, teal, kingfishers, greenback herons, American bittern, turtles, bullfrogs, butterflies. <laughs> Bluegill bass, a veritable habitat of lots of stuff. I don't know what I'm saying. All right, well, I'm just about to lodge. Day off. It'll be nice to be in the warm. And oh, by the way, for uh, last night, thank you very much, uh, St. Thomas Aquinas Parish. There in Thomas, I got to sleep on the floor in the old school building so that was nice didn't have to be out in the 28 degree weather all right all right all right got some more friends here just uh minding their own business not minding me said maybe that one over there All right, guys, well, thanks for the welcoming committee. <laughs> I think that's where I'm going. All right, well, I left uh, Canaan, Canaan Resort this morning. Got a late start as usual, but um, this has been one heck of a little climb. Only, I think, about 1,000 feet, but... Still, you know, I haven't had many climbs, if any, since the Rockies. And I think this will really be my last climb for the rest of the trip. Once I get up and over here, into the Dolly Sods. Dolly Sods, I believe, is all the way down. And then the Forest Road 75, which I'm gonna take over to Jordan Run. I don't know if that goes up or, or not. So that might be a little bit of a climb, but I think for the rest of the trip, rest of the journey, this is this is going to be the biggest and most cli um, climbing, about a thousand feet or so, that I will have done. And it's been a cold, drizzly, rainy, blustery morning. The wind will come from the west, and then it gusts from the northwest, and then... <laughs> It whips around from the south. As you can see, it's rainy. So does that mean there's gonna be a tent tonight? Huh. Supposedly it's supposed to clear up at, tw at one o'clock, which is in a few minutes. Uh, and then be clear until about 11 in the morning tomorrow. So, let's see. Well, I made it up here to the top, Dolly Sods, as you can see right here. And um, you probably can't read that, but uh, Dolly Sods was, back a long time ago, used as a target bombing practice for the military. So there's still some unexploded ordnance here and there out in the wilderness. So the admonition is, no shortcuts, stay on the trail. <laughs> Which will be okay anyway, because the Blackbird Knob Trail that I'm taking is pretty much a straight shot all the way down. This is really a pretty spot in here. I'm about halfway down the mountain, I think and came across a stand of pines. Obviously, um, there's been campsites in here. 
It's really pretty. And I don't think the camera really picks it up that well, but um, the way that the sun is filtering through the trees, creating the shadows, it's really pretty. And then from a pine thicket into golden leaves, empty trees, all on a muddy, sloggy trail. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, I left the campsite uh, this morning, and here's Steve, Chris, and Doug. Jason. 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 Doctor right there. Jason. Is Lynn's. Hey guys. Um, they just came from the, uh, what you call it, Beaver Dam Beaver Trail? Beaver Dam Trail. Which is uh, right down there. I came from the Blackbird Knob Trail, which is up that way. And their trail was sloggy, my trail was sloggy, but um, we all just happened to be here at the same time, at the same place. And uh, so now you're going to be famous. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so Hi, they're Will. from uh, Baltimore area, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So uh, we're actually called the Hartford County Ridge Raiders. Hartford we, County we hike Ridge Raiders. Twice a year. Yeah. All right, yeah. <laughs> twice a year. There you go. So they're getting ready to do a long hike. They're going to walk across America too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Make our way west. Well, looking back to uh, Dolly Sods, and then across the uh, top of the mountain over there, which was Canaan Valley, and this is the trailhead right here, and also a scenic lookout called Bear Rocks. Uh, but anyway, I want to show you this over here to the west. So this area right here where I'm on, we're looking uh, southerly right now. This is this has all been called the Allegheny Plateau, which is a part of the Allegheny Mountain um, structure. But then uh, take a look out west, uh, out east here. And uh, when you look on the satellite map, I'll, I'll show you right here, in fact. When you look at a satellite map and, or if you're flying over, you see all these mountains that are running southwest and northeast, roughly from uh, Tennessee to New York. This is what you're looking at right here. This uh, whole range. And um, way out beyond the east there is the, uh, actually the Appalachians. I think you can see the top of them way out there maybe. Maybe not so much. Anyway, pretty interesting. And then I'll show you this little graphic here as well, is um, how this plateau affects the weather. So you got the, you got the prevailing weather coming from the west, and um, it's moist and rainy. And then as it gets over here on this plateau, it, over on the other side, this easterly side here that you're just looking at, it, uh, it's a bit drier until you get the orographic uh, lifting again up on the uh, Appalachians there. So a pretty interesting, uh, pretty interesting topography to look at and uh, geography and the terrain and all that. And uh, I'm very impressed with what I've seen so far of West Virginia. Now, um, today's goal is actually going down right in that little valley there, right in here, and then um, heading north to uh, Brick Church tonight. They're going to let me sleep on the floor there, so I'd be out of the rain or snow, whatever's coming. The gun hunting season starts today. As I was coming down the forest road, a bunch of trucks coming up, um, guys dressed in their blaze orange and all that. They're going to spend some time up there. Some of them were really loaded down. Looks like some are just going to spend the day. But anyway, now that I've been walking here on this Jordan Run Road, that's where I came from. Looking back and listening back, you can hear the, gun <laughs> the gunfire starting. Uh, so maybe there's some early uh, success in their hunting. Uh, I told you yesterday about the hunters going up there getting ready for hunting season. 
uh, which starts tomorrow. <laughs> I think they've already started unofficially. There's been a uh, whole bunch of gunshots, gunshots this morning uh, as I come out of Maysville here. And uh, by the way, thank you very much, um, Pastor Junkins there at uh, the Brick Church for letting me stay in your place uh, in your church last night. Thank you very much. Mutual prayers. And also, too, thank you uh, down there at the um, Galen's General Store down there in Mayville. I didn't know what to expect. There wasn't a whole bunch of information about the place on the internet, and uh, I was counting on it to be a resupply place, just kind of flipping the coin. And it turned out that um, they've got a little bit of everything. It's, it's like a general store for the locals. So it's got your typical snacks, convenience items, but it's got a few staples as well. and. Hardware stuff and things you might need around the house and hunting stuff and and all that. So if you ever get through Maysville, make sure to uh, check out uh, Galen's Country Store. All right, so uh, this is Nobly Road. I'll be going on it for about another 12 miles over to um, another church, the Nobly Church. Thank you, Pastor Leatherman. And then tomorrow is Kaiser. The next day is Rawlings, and the next day after that will be LaVale, which is right next to um, Cumberland, where the CNO Canal is. I'll join the CNO Canal there, and that'll be uh, almost the beginning of the end of the trip. Hmm. It's interesting how you could be in a completely different place, and yet somehow that will remind you of another place far away. For instance, this, this little place right here along Nobly Road reminds me of a little section that I drove in Central California along the San Andreas Fault. This rolling countryside just looks the same. And those mountains off in the distance would remind me of um, the uh, coastal mountains there in that section of the San Andreas Fault in Central California. Huh. All right, another friend here. Howdy, friend. He was just here minding his own business, and I asked him if I could come by and say hello. Hello there. He's got his winter coat on, as you can see, a little bit thicker there. All right, well, I'll be moving on. Okay, I'll see you later. On down the road. that pretty blue sky. And look up there on the ridge. Huh. That's pretty clever, isn't it? Spinning mailboxes. <laughs> I'm not going to spin it because somebody might think I'm stealing their mail. Pretty clever. That's the first I've seen. Looks like a little observatory on that house, huh? What a difference a day makes. Look at this. And I think uh, somebody said it's going to be in the 60s today after being just in the 40s and 30s the previous days, 20s at night. Clear skies. Still on Nobly Road. And uh, thanks, Pastor Roger, for letting me stay in his church last night. Yeah, it was cold. 
on to um, Kaiser, Kaiser, West Virginia. Well, I guess I'm going the right way, huh? Another American Discovery Trail placard. Yep, and there's one going the other way too for those east westbounders. Knobbly Road, outside of, uh, south of Antioch, West Virginia. North of Maysville. Hey, can you see this in the asphalt here? All this scraped, whitish colored area? That's from the uh, Amish uh, wagons coming down the hill. So that's the clippity-clop of the uh, horse hoofs as well as the uh, steel wheels of the wagons themselves or the carriage buggies, whatever you want to call them. And the interesting thing too, this is the downhill <clears throat> stretch. Over here on this side, you can uh, see it a little bit as well but not quite as much. And I'm guessing that that's because on the downhill stretch here, um, they're having to put the brakes on the buggy a little bit and it's scraping into the asphalt a little bit more. That's just my presumption. Anybody know uh, the mechanics of this uh, horse and buggy thing going on asphalt? But I'm thinking that's what it is. Downhill portion is a little bit more scraped up in white and the uphill portion even though it's got the uh, clippity clop marks of the horses not as scraped up what do you think let me know Walking these uh, quiet country roads, you know, in the morning with all the color here, the shadows. And uh, got me to thinking about uh, what the pastor and I were talking about yesterday when I got there. In that, um, I'm wondering if society has lost its peacefulness just because of the all the modern communications and how something can happen right here in this place right now and be uh, big news around the world within a matter of minutes or hours at the very most. And it seems that uh, with all this communications, electronic age, the computers, the TVs, the radios, video games, all that sort of stuff. It's made everything so amplified in life. It's made it so, seem so fast and go, 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 that, um, I don't know, do you think we've uh, lost our ability to be quiet, listen, contemplate? I, uh, in a way, think we have. So many people I, I've seen, it, they just can't, they can't sit still. They, it, uh, being in the quiet and doing nothing just, it, it makes them anxious <laughs> in a way. So, uh, I don't know. Um, maybe we all need to just unplug for a while, once in a while, and just listen to the quiet, but listen to nothing, but listen to everything at the same time, you know what I mean? Huh. There's a guy here in his truck just a minute or so ago, and uh, he said it's real good spring water, but he comes here and gets it, so uh, I think I'll fill up. See how it tastes, huh? Yeah, it is good stuff. Not as cold as you'd expect, but it's pretty good.
This is called Grayson Gap Road. Grayson Gap Road turned off a uh, knobbly here. Going into Kaiser. So I told you a little bit earlier the weather really has changed today in comparison with the past couple of weeks. Look at this. Shirt sleeves, no jacket, I'm almost even sweating. Uh, interesting how it changes just like that. Well, I'm kicking myself. I was um, coming from right over there. Saw this guy with his big backpack coming from over here, big backpack and a dog. So I yelled out to him and he said, I came across the street, said, hey, I thought I was the only crazy one around here. But uh, darn, I didn't take his picture. Sorry, I feel bad about that now. Anyway, his name is uh, Jim Rogers and uh, said he's been walking back and forth across country six times over the past six years and uh, he's on his way back west uh, we just happened to cross paths and interesting story he said that um, he is uh, he used to be addicted to opiates heroin all that all that sort of stuff and he uh, got over it hi cows so um, anyway, he's eventually going to try and get his way up to um, Whistler, British Columbia, because somebody told him there's uh, some good hang gliding and stuff over there, or parasailing. So anyway, uh, pray for Jim Rogers. Uh, Jim Rogers, thank you for your prayers. And darn, I wish I'd taken his picture. You know, it's always one of those woulda, coulda, shoulda things, right? Oh well. I'll have you know that I've entered the friendliest city in the USA. How about that? Now let's see if that holds true and I don't get run over when I cross the street. <laughs> well, look at that. They even stopped for me so I can take a picture. So I guess it is the friendliest city <laughs> in the USA. I've got another uh, interesting tidbit for you about uh, Kaiser here. In the Civil War, Kaiser changed hands between the Federal troops and the Confederate troops 14 times <laughs> until, the Fed the, until the Union finally got it for good. And uh, up here, I think that's right up there on the hill is Potomac State College and that's where Fort Fuller was, Federal Fort Fuller. And then uh, Fort Fuller was also supported by a number of different smaller forts around the city to finally keep it in the Union hands once and for all. Well, here's another place where I've got a number of selections to go. Which one should I do? <laughs> oh, what happened? Well, how about... Um, I say we go that way. Where does that take us? That takes us to there, which is there, which is Maryland. Over that bridge right there. I got across on the other side because that's where the sidewalk is. Guess what? I've just left West Virginia. It's kind of a bittersweet feeling, you know. It's uh, West Virginia is a nice state, and uh, here's one last look of Kaiser.
So, um, yep, West Virginia. I'm now in Maryland. And what's so bittersweet about that? Well, Maryland is my second to last state before the end of the journey, with Delaware being the end, and Delaware only being about 45 miles. Um, I will actually do will, <laughs> actually do will, that really makes sense. I actually will chew off another little bite of West Virginia as I get down a ways along the CNO Canal, I'll get into Harper's Ferry. And I'll be in Harper's Ferry for maybe an hour and then back into Maryland. Um, that river's pretty clear, isn't it? So another state, another feeling. This, this, time, this time I can put into words, it's kind of bittersweet, I guess. It's bittersweet being on my second to last state. Hello, Maryland. And as a midpoint celebration, I'm gonna do this. West Virginia, here it comes. Well, guess I need to throw a little harder. 